Welcome to another episode of Municipal Affairs. Today, we're diving into one of the most anticipated events for local government leaders in Alberta. That is the upcoming Alberta Municipal Convention and Trade Show happening from September 24th to 27th in Red Deer, Alberta. As many of you may know, Alberta Municipality works closely with elected officials and administrative leadership to develop innovative solutions and drive growth in communities across the province. This annual event provides a vital platform for these leaders to exchange ideas, discuss pressing issues, and collaborate with other levels of government to help build a resilient, thriving community. This year's convention promises to be especially dynamic, with speeches from Alberta Premier Danielle Smith and Alberta NDP leader Nahid Nenshi giving delegates the opportunity to hear directly from both party leaders. The ever-popular Bear Pit session will also be returning, where Alberta cabinet ministers will answer questions directly from municipal leaders, ensuring an open dialogue on important issues issues. Now, in addition to the political discussions that will be taking place, delegates will also be debating 19 resolutions submitted by municipalities across the province. These include critical topics such as the use of automated vote counting systems in the 2025 municipal election, funding for regional economic development alliances, addressing declining fire services in rural Alberta, and strategies to retain and attract rural health care professionals. So, joining us for today's discussion is Alberta Municipalities President Tyler Gandon, who is also the mayor of the city of Otaskawin, who will share his insights on what this year's event holds and what he hopes delegates will take away from the four-day convention. Attention Saskatchewan. This election season, Municipal Affairs is hitting the road in partnership with SUMA for the Saskatchewan Provincial Election. Join us on election night for live coverage straight from Regina on YouTube featuring exclusive insights from municipal leaders and stakeholders across the province. We will be capturing their reaction to the results and be diving into what the new provincial government means for municipalities. Plus, this fall, we will be traveling across Saskatchewan to hear directly from local leaders about the issues that matter most to you. Plus, this fall, we will be traveling across Saskatchewan starting September 30th to hear directly from local leaders like yourself about the issues that matter most. This is your election covered like never before. Municipal Affairs, your trusted voice from the grassroots to the government. <laughs> Tyler, I appreciate taking time out of your busy schedule to sit down with me today. I want to start by getting uh, an overview of what's going to be taking place from September 24th to 27th in Red Deer, Alberta, with the Alberta Municipalities Trade and Conference Show. Are you looking forward to getting back together with all the municipalities from across Alberta? Very much so. Um, for some of us, it's it's the only chance we get to see each other in a year, so reconnecting with 1100 of my closest friends and colleagues is is going to be a good few days. And what's the main takeaway that you're hoping that this year's uh, delegates will take away from this year's convention? First and foremost, it's it's a strong networking event. We get to learn from each other um some of the the best ways to address things. We've been working with municipalities from across the province and we get to hear how um, some of their issues or some of their celebrations have been going over the last year, the work that they've been doing, um, best practices. But then we've got uh, 10 educational sessions. We've got um, Q&A with ministers. We've got the premier coming to speak. We've got the uh, um, leader of the opposition, Nahed Nenshi, coming as well. So it'll be really interesting to hear Premier Smith and Nahed, uh, their remarks leading into our convention. Um, and of course, we've got... Um, regulations on some of the legislation that we've been eagerly anticipating hearing the details of. Um, so with all of that, uh, it'll be a really busy few days in Red Deer. So I I want to pick up on just something you just said is about the regulations around some of the bills. And one of the big bills that affects municipalities in the upcoming year is Bill 20 around the changes to the uh, Local Elections Authority Act, which is basically how elections run in this province. Um, we it, the bill was announced and passed uh, earlier this spring. We are now a year away from uh, potentially a year away from the next 
municipal election in the province of Alberta. Can you give us an update of how the talks have gone or how you are seeing the talks with the province around the regulations about the next election? Yeah, I was really happy to be a part of, I think, three or four different webinars with the province on Bill 20 and what those regulations are going to be. Uh, I'm hoping to see a lot of our work that we've done as an association reflected in what that legislation looks like uh, coming up this fall with the Local Authorities Elections Act or the LAEA um, taking effect January 1st, 2025. They, we've got some work to do as municipalities in terms of the changes that we're going to see with the upcoming municipal election uh, in October of 2025. So it's going to be a really busy fall and winter for our administrations as we prepare for an upcoming municipal election or uh, silly season. Do you get any indication on the potential announcement of any uh, policy changes it, during this convention, or are you still waiting like the rest of us are to hear from the minister or the premier about when these changes before January 1st will be announced? Yeah, I think this would be a great opportunity for um, the province to release some of those regulations, uh, give us in, some insight into what that's going to look like at our convention. You're going to have 1,100 delegates, mayors, councillors, administrators uh, from across the province. No bigger audience at one place. And so I think there's no better place to be able to uh, release some of that information for us as we've been awaiting it for, for quite a while. Outside of the political arena of the convention is also the policy part of the convention. And you have 19 resolutions that members have submitted across this province to be debated and discussed at this year's upcoming convention. You have also eight other resolutions that will be discussed as well. Of the 19, you have discussions around RITAs, around declining fire services, retention, retraction of uh, rural healthcare professionals, and also automated voting vote count systems in the upcoming municipal election. This is a large swath of information that delegates will be voting on. Is this tradition that it is sort of a member-driven focus of, during the policy part of the convention? Absolutely. I look forward to that. So we, um, as a board here, we get to see those resolutions as they're coming in uh, and as we're putting it together for our convention. So what I love to hear is the conversation around and the questions that are asked around each of these resolutions when we're reading them and it seems like a no-brainer or why would we be putting resources into this? And then you hear the conversation and some of the struggles and issues that our municipalities are having. Uh, and then you totally get it and and it becomes a, a really easy resolution to, to support. Uh, the hardest part for us as an association is we're limited in terms of the amount of work we can do in a given year. So um, prioritizing those resolutions for sure and making sure that our members are looked after as best we can. Uh, there's some there's some really big issues going on in the province right now. I look at the town of Hinton with their struggles with physicians, attraction and retention, the amount of money that some of these municipalities are putting into attraction and retention for their physicians is something that desperately needs to be addressed. And I, I hope that through especially our Q&A with the premier and and the ministers, we're going to get some answers for that as well, too, because it's it's unsustainable, especially with the growth in our province right now, um, to be able to to worry about whether or not an ambulance is going to respond to your call, whether or not you've got a doctor um, to attend as just your your family doctor, and then ER closures across the province as well. It's it's a really hard time for Albertans for sure. So it would be good to hear what that plan is moving forward. And that's not even taking into consideration education and the amount of students that are new to our programs, to our schools. Uh, over the last couple of years in Edmonton and Calgary alone, over the last two years, we're seeing 25,000 new students in those two big cities. And so we need a plan and we need to understand what that's going to look like so that we aren't worried about whether or not the, the growth is going to affect it. And all of a sudden, we're going to see a max exodus of of Albertans to other provinces where they're going to get that support. Two of the policies I want to just talk about briefly, if you don't mind, is the automated vote count system and the other one being the extending municipal voting to permanent residents uh, across the province. This was put forward by St. Albert and the city of Calgary. 
these two resolutions have already come out. Uh, the the premier and also the minister of municipal affairs has said permanent residents will not be able to vote. And with Bill Twenty, it already says we're not going to automate it, uh, vote count systems. Um, why debate these policies when you already have a clear indication of how the province is going to answer to these policy? Uh, uh, I, I don't want to say challenges, but advocacy work that the Alberta municipalities will have to do if they pass. Yeah, I think it's important the province hears why these issues are important to us. So we've got 270 member municipalities across the province and the impact that these changes to the legislation are going to have in our communities. Um, I think we're, we're going to hear numbers in terms of what the impact is for a city like Calgary or Edmonton or some of our mid cities and then all the way down to our, our summer villages. The impact that this legislation has on all of our members across the board um, needs to be heard by the province and why we have been opposing this. It's one thing to say that we don't like a certain piece of legislation, but it's really important that the province understands why, what the impact is going to be on our municipalities and, and maybe give them some, some insight and, and an opportunity to, to make some amendments. You you spoke briefly uh, at the beginning of the interview about meeting with Premier Danielle Smith. Uh, in our conversations previously, you've said that she wants to meet with Alberta municipalities after the convention or even see what the resolutions are. Can you talk about what you're hoping to have uh, come out of that conversation with the Premier if you haven't already had it? And are you looking for it for towards a more collaborative uh, work uh, uh, partnership between the province and the municipalities heading into and out of the Alberta Municipalities Convention. Yeah, absolutely. I was really encouraged when we met with her earlier this summer um, that she committed to meeting with our association following our convention. Uh, and I think it just shows the uh, the importance of the relationship that we're going to build with the province. And so her taking an interest in what these resolutions are and what is important to our members, I think speaks to those two pieces right there in terms of permanent residents being able to vote and voting tabulators sharing with her why these are important to Alberta municipalities across the province and having that opportunity to sit down with her one-on-one -on -one, uh, and share some of the concerns, but also some of the things that are going really, really well for our municipalities too, because not everything is doom and gloom, right? We've got, we've got a province that is, is supporting municipalities. We've got huge growth going on. And while as an association, we would like to see more support, especially financially with our infrastructure, um, the province is supporting our municipalities in that growth too. So I don't want it to be um, all negative for sure. I want to highlight some of the victories that we've had too. One of the big things that came out of last year's convention was the increase to LGFF funding to potentially or uh, an additional $1 billion to that funding for municipalities. Uh, it's been now a year. Can you give us an update on how those discussions are going? Or are you still hearing the same thing that us as reporters, media, journalists are hearing that you're getting already enough and the funding formula is actually going to increase along with resource revenues? I, I don't think that we've heard that what you're getting is enough. I think there's a recognition that we've got a huge infrastructure deficit in the province. And between the 330-ish municipalities across the province, we've got about a $30 billion infrastructure deficit. So I think the province is keenly aware of the need. It's a matter of prioritizing some of those dollars. And absolutely, we'll continue to ask for that billion dollars. And as time goes on and with inflation and, and the amount that uh, our deficit grows, that number is going to continue to grow. And it's critically important that we see those funds for our municipalities to look after that infrastructure especially when we're growing at the rate that we are. Final question before I let you go here, Tyler, and that is, what's the one thing that you're hoping to take away as mayor of Wetaskiwin a year ahead of the next election? Is there anything that you're looking for, particularly from the cabinet ministers, from the premier, as the mayor of your town, of Wetask city of Wetaskiwin, that you want to take back to your community? I think recognizing that we've got a municipal election coming up in 13 months, What's really important to me is that commitment from the province um, as partners. It's we can't do it on our own. There are there are so many issues that we're having in our municipalities, and we're the ones closest to the people. Uh, mayors and councillors are the ones that are running into our constituents regularly at the grocery store, out for supper, um, and having to explain why our ERs are closing or why 
um, a family doesn't have a family doctor or why classroom sizes are so big and we don't have enough schools to accommodate all of that. So I think what I'd really like to take away from that is the that growing relationship with the province and helping them understand why it is so hard for municipally elected officials um, to conduct their work when we're looking after budgets and governing a municipality as opposed to having to have answers for our healthcare and education um, failing infrastructure. If 15 years ago we were getting $420 per Albertan to look after infrastructure and now we're getting 186 and people have to to try to understand why their property taxes are going up so much, but it comes on the cuts that we're seeing from the provincial government and the lack of infrastructure funding, um, grants in place of taxes for provincially owned um, buildings in our communities that are only paying half what they used to pay uh, takes a toll on a municipality. So my takeaway is, is having the province understand the impact that they can have on a municipality, both positively and negatively, but changing that um, into a more positive understanding and making sure that um, they understand the impact of a cut or when an ER closes. Generally, the Minister of Health isn't the one being called. It's your local member of council that has to answer those questions. So that'll be first and foremost in my mind and, and making sure that we, we convey that information to the province. I said last question, but there's always one that comes up last minute, and I want to make sure I ask this. Uh, earlier this week, a big stalwart in the municipal arena in the greater Edmonton area, Andrew Knack, councillor, announced that he was not standing for re-election. I know he's been a part of the Alberta Municipalities team around the board on occasion. Uh, what does it mean to have someone like that uh, leave uh, the municipal field? It's it's hard. I had uh, I've had a, actually a few members of council reach out to me um, and talk about Andrew not running again in the next election. Um, he is he is thought of so highly by members of council in summer villages all the way up to the big cities in Alberta. He makes a point of understanding and learning about your municipality so that he can bring that back to our board table with Alberta municipalities and make sure that he's speaking on behalf of everybody, not just Edmonton and not just Calgary. So it's going to be a huge loss, not only for the city of Edmonton, but for our association as well, too. He's had a huge impact here, and I'm definitely going to miss working with him if I am lucky enough to be back. Uh, after the next election or if I'm back after the next election to, but to be able to, to draw on his knowledge and, and his passion for municipalities is honestly second to none. He's been fantastic to work with. So it sounds like you're running for re-election. Is that an announcement that I just heard? That is not an announcement. <laughs> I, I have lots of time to decide whether or not I'm going to be running in the next election. Least yeah. of my words right now. <laughs> Tyler, much appreciated. Thank you so much. And we'll see you in Red Deer in uh, on the 24th to the 27th. Looking forward to it. Look, yeah, looking forward to it. Thanks, Chris. Thank you for tuning in to Municipal Affairs. Now, we hope you've enjoyed today's conversation. And we hope that you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Because we have upcoming episodes every single day during the Alberta Municipalities Convention in Red Deer this year. So if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you're listening to this, head over to our YouTube channel and subscribe there because the live shows will only be available on YouTube. So your support helps us to continue to grow and bring you more important conversations like you heard today. So until next time, stay connected, stay informed, and we'll see you next time here.